we got a new ring light guys if you remember it's been a long time because this one right here who's deciding to take a bath right here chewed the cord of my last one she loves to chew cords she's a big stinker about that but we finally got a new one um so hopefully the lighting's a little bit better we'll see i definitely need the artificial light though because i live in the midwest it gets very cold here it gets very dark here so my filming hours have been limited because of when natural light is out so finally we have this back yay go us so today is the ultimate guide to qb tyler i'd say is like the queen of taboo she really is. QB Tyler does a taboo story like no other. I finally finished reading all of QB Tyler's backlist. That was one of my goals for 2022 was to finish like some authors backlists that I've read at least like over half of their books. So QB Tyler is the first one that I can check off. Check, go me, already going good on the New Year's goals. But the reason I kind of like was like, oh, I need to like get moving on these is because actually on Jess from Peace Love Books on her channel on Saturday, January 22nd, we are going to be going live with QB Tyler to do an author interview. Jess is having her on her channel and she asked me to come like guest host with her. I am so excited. Oh, I can't wait to talk about some of my favorite books of hers. So I'm so excited to talk to her and like pick her brain about some of those. But also I'm just excited to do like a live show and like an author interview. I've never done one of those before. And I'm just really excited that QB Tyler gets to be the first one that I get to be a part of. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna break down every single book of hers. I have read every single book of hers. I've either read them last year or even like the year before. I've read them over like the past two years. I've read all of her books. So I'm excited. Let's break them all down. I'm gonna leave the link to Jess's channel in the description box down below. So that way you can go and make sure that you set your reminder for Saturday, for this Saturday, right? It is the 22nd, right? Saturday the 22nd at 5 p.m. Central, which is my time, but 6 p.m. Eastern, which is Jess's time. I'll leave her channel link down below so that way you can make sure that you go and set your reminder for that. And please come and join us. It's gonna be a fun, fun, fun time. And yeah, let's jump in to the guide to QB Tyler. I did not like list these out in any particular order or anything, but I will just say that if you are reading a QB Tyler book, I hope that you love Taboo because the vast majority of her books are taboo which is perfect for me because if it's not bad taboo in some way like I don't want it I love forbidden romances and she is like the queen of forbidden romances so a lot of these are going to be very taboo I'll give you a gist of what each is about depending on like your level of comfortability with taboo she has like a broad range she has from like dipping your toe into the water to like full on in the ocean so Let's go. I am gonna start with my absolute favorite and the one that I will go absolutely feral for when it is released. And that has always been you by QB Tyler. Also, I gotta get this out there because Twisted Christmas is gonna be coming down off of Kindle soon. So make sure that you go on and get it right now. Like go get it. It's only 99 cents and it's a collection of novellas, but go there for QB Tyler's one. I mean, the other ones are great too. Every single other one that I've read out of there, I've loved, but I mean, oh, this is a standout. So it is a novella, but she is expanding it to be a full length novel, which I will be one clicking that, one clicking it right here, pre-ordering, one click, everything, I'm so ready. So Always Been You follows James and Gabrielle. And this is a pretty taboo one. It is an adopted siblings romance and an age gap. So Gabrielle was adopted by James's family when she was around two and then raised and became a part of their family. And James is quite a bit older than her. I wanna say maybe like 10-ish years. I forget the exact, but it is like a decent age gap. When Gabrielle is a student going to school in the city and James is there working and he kind of like just watches out for her, makes sure that she's doing okay. And they're getting ready to head home for Christmas with the rest of their family. But now that she's 18, they're starting to kind of change their feelings towards one another a little bit. And they're both trying to like not act on it, to not like change any dynamics going on. But before they head home for Christmas, they just can't help themselves. And oh my God, it is the best novella I've ever read in my entire life. I mean, you guys have heard this over and over again since I read this in December. I'm obsessed. I'm so obsessed with it. The amount of angst that QB Tyler was able to pack into a novella, that's my thing with novellas. I don't normally like them because they have to move at a much quicker pace and I like more of a slow burn. But the amount of tension and angst that was built up in the shortest amount of time, I don't know how she did it. So good. The chemistry between James and Gabrielle was just perfect. The taboo level, the steam level, everything in this just worked for me. And I loved the little bit of like the family that we got to see. So I'm hoping that we get to expand on them more in the book, like the full length book. 
Oh my God, it was just so good. You guys literally need to snag this before it's gone or before it like goes away until it's an actual novel. I just can't wait, but definitely on the higher of the taboo level of her books, I will say. You gotta play with that right now. She's so cute. I can't with her. Okay, next, I guess I'm gonna kind of like highlight, I guess, my favorites first because next I, this, I think, this, this duet is going to end up in my top 10 of 2022 and it's only January, but oh my God, it blew me away. And that is the bittersweet duet. Um, but technically there is like a third novella kind of in there, but we're going to focus on the duet first, uh, focusing on one couple. So the first one is bittersweet surrender and then there's bittersweet addiction. So bittersweet surrender is where you start. And this is Charlie and Will's story. So this is very taboo because Charlie and her husband, Matt, have been having some issues. I think it's like they've been together for eight years, married for five, but having problems for like two or three years now. So they started to go to marriage counseling after Charlie asked Matt for a divorce and he was like, we need to try counseling first. So they start going to counseling. But when they arrive to marriage counseling, Charlie sees Will. Will sees Charlie. And oh, do things start swirling? Actually, I should say Charlie sees Dr. Montgomery and Dr. Montgomery sees Charlie and oh my God. So yeah, Charlie has an affair with her marriage counselor. So definitely taboo. There is cheating, love triangle-ish because obviously Char Charlie is still married to Matt while she's having this affair with Will. So hot, so hot. I mean, you you just know when you go into a QB Tyler book, you know to expect a, just a certain level of hotness that not many deliver on consistently. And oh, oh, it's just so good. So I loved this duet so much. I specifically loved like the sneaking around aspect, especially in the first book. So the first book is very heavy on the sneaking around between Charlie and Will and making sure that they don't get caught behind Matt's back. Because obviously that would have ramifications, one for Charlie with her relationship with Matt and like any kind of divorce proceedings, if they were to move forward, like that could potentially, you know, shake some things up with that. And also with Will's career, like he is a marriage counselor, like you are not allowed to be having affairs with your patients. So obviously his career is in jeopardy. So there's just a lot of like tension between the three of them in this first book. Oh, I just ate it up. And then the second book, Bittersweet Addiction. I was a little worried about this one. I can't say too much plot wise because obviously it follows Will and Charlie again and like directly takes place of the events following Bittersweet Surrender. But I was a little nervous because of how some things fell in the first book. I was like, is it still going to have that same like it factor with like certain things taken away? But oh, I loved it even more. Like I think I actually loved the second book more than the first book and I already loved the first book a lot. But the second book was fan fantastic and again I can't say too much plot wise I'll talk about it more in my wrap up and maybe like spoil things a bit more in there to like give you my full thoughts on it but it's really good it's just like a continuation and oh I loved it and then a tack on to this duet is bittersweet love so this is a novella and it follows Lauren who is Charlie's best friend so you definitely see Lauren in the first two books and she actually dates Will's brother for a short amount of time in the other books so you see them like intermingling a bit but then in this one it's actually Lauren and and Vincent's relationship. So Lauren ends up moving to Chicago. You find this out in the duet. She ends up moving to Chicago for work. And when she arrives there, she is immediately broken up with <laughs> from Will's brother. And she's out at a bar drinking one night, just kind of like drinking away her problems. And she has this coworker that she fucking hates. And of course he shows up and they have their little banter. And they decide to set up like a little enemies with benefits situation. So it's like enemies with benefits, forced proximity because they're coworkers and they also are assigned to work on a like an article together. They're both journalists. So they are now forced to work on this project together. It's so good. Again, for a novella for being so short, there's so much packed in between the two of them and their character development. And you also get to see Will and Charlie in this as well. You get to see them in the future and like Lauren reuniting with them for something, which I'm not gonna spoil. But so out, out of like all of QB Tyler's list, like obviously always been you, always been you is my number one. But I do think that this might be number two. I just loved the hell out of this duet. It was just everything that I wanted. And I don't mind cheating in books, honestly. It doesn't super bother me. I know it's a trigger for some people, but I mean, for me, I'm kind of like, I just like separated out as being like fiction reality and cheating doesn't bother me. And in this case, I was all for the cheating. Okay, next is I think the second QB Tyler book that I ever read because when I see student teacher, sold. 
you don't need much more to convince me to read something. So the Campus Tales series by her. So it consists right now of three books, but they are like fairly short books. I think there's a fourth one coming, but I'm not 100% sure. I thought I saw it on Goodreads, like summer semester. But the first one we're going to talk about is spring semester. No, it's not, you idiot. It's called first semester. Thank you very much. So this one follows Aiden and Skylar, and it is a student teacher age gap forbidden romance. I will read anything student teacher. I just love it. And I specifically love it in a college setting more so than anything else. So Skylar is like fresh off of a breakup. She's looking for a rebound. So when she moves away to college, I believe she's in like DC. Maybe you're like somewhere in that area. Um, her roommate convinced her to sign up for a dating app and set her age up because she's like, everyone lies about it, whatever. So she meets up with this guy before classes start. They hit it off. They have a great night. They're like, okay, you know, they go their separate ways. And then she finds out that the guy that she hooked up with that night is going to be her new professor. Aiden, oh, you know, I just ate this up. And it has everything that I love about a student teacher romance in it. And along with like the college fun aspect setting, I really liked Skylar's character. She's very like carefree and fun. And I really liked that. And I just love the complication, you know, of him being her professor and her being his student because that just always creates the best drama. I, I love it. I never get sick of it. And then second semester by QB Tyler is her younger sisters. Or is she younger or older? Skylar's sister, Serena, it follows her. So this one is Serena and Landon, and this is a dad's best friend slash boss slash age gap romance. So Serena is kind of the opposite of Skylar's, where Skylar's like a little more carefree and fun. Serena is like much more of a rule follower. She gets this internship at her dad's office where she is going to be working under his partner slash like best friend Landon. And when she arrives there, her and Landon kind of hit it off a little bit and it kind of goes from there but yeah definitely taboo because one of the age gap the age gap is pretty big and then also obviously with him being her father's best friend and also her boss just so many levels there to that so many levels to the tabooness we love multiple like I love just an age gap but you know what's even better than just an age gap when you add in father's best friend and you know what's even better than just age gap and father's best friend when you add in your boss to that scenario thank you Thank you for the delivery on this. I loved it so good. I think this one, so first semester is by far my favorite out of this one. You just can't really top student teacher for me, but this one, oh, loved it as well. And then last one is spring semester. So this one follows one of their friend, one of Skylar's friends slash roommates. So this one is Everett and Layton and they are childhood best friends to lovers kind of situation and accidental pregnancy. It is my least favorite out of the three. I do still enjoy it and I did still really like it. However, like, friends to lovers is never going to be my favorite trope i prefer like enemy like i love hate to love and accidental pregnancy is never going to be my favorite trope either um but still good still like a fun steamy time i mean that still delivers and also this one has cheating in it too because they're both dating other people when we start but they are both hooking up with one another at the same time but they both originally started dating other people because they didn't think that like they would ever be together and they were trying to like make it seem like they were okay with how their relationship was when really they weren't and they should have just been together from the start but they weren't and then when they finally decide to be like okay we're gonna like go all in on this we're gonna break up with our other people something happens and it doesn't work out that way that's the campus tale series series definitely super bingeable like pretty quick reads and for me QB Tyler's writing just really flows where like I get into a good rhythm when I'm reading it like some right like some books I find are like really heavy on dialogue where I don't feel like I'm getting enough like substance out of that and some books are really heavy with descriptions where I'm like this is taking forever hers has like the perfect balance of back and forth that it just like I get into a rhythm reading them and her writing just clicks for me and these are like definitely super bingeable because you can just really read them like one after another and they're just good spicy steamy times okay now the rest of these are all standalone so we have four more three novels and one novella let's do the novella first i've already talked about this one before in my brother's best friend romance recommendation video because you know what i love just as much just a smidgen less but just as much almost as student teacher brother's best friend trope so my best friend sister 
obviously. A uh, little bit of age gap here, not a lot, but like a teeny tiny bit. So this one follows Jackson and Ava, and Ava moves to, I think, New York City for school, and she's going to school there, and her older brother, Tucker, I think, asks his best friend Jackson, like, hey, can you kind of just like keep an eye on her, just kind of help her out, watch out for her, you know, if she's there by herself, like just want to make sure that she's being safe and taken care of, you know, whatever. And Jackson agrees, and Ava's only too happy that he does because she's always had a crush on him. And as they start like getting to know each other in the city a little bit, she asks Jackson if she can just help him, help her out with a little favor. Can he just maybe, you know, help her get a little experience if you're catching my drift? And Jackson immediately is like, no, I can't do that to my best friend. Like, we can't cross that line. Oh, no, no. But then when he sees Ava potentially talking to someone else, oh, does he get territorial? And I live for it. I just love the brother's best friend trope. I love the, like, forbidden aspect that it adds to it. And, like, that hint of being like, oh, we're going to be caught. Kind of like with cheating a little bit. <laughs> oh, it's like, oh, they might get caught. And, like, student teacher, oh, they might get caught. I don't know, I guess I just want people sneaking around in my books, I guess. Not in real life, men, not in real life, but in my books, I eat that up. So yeah, this one's great. I've already talked about it in a few different videos before, but just a solid brother's best friend novella. And then the three standalones. So I'm gonna start off with my favorite that I just read this year. I should have I should have read it last year. This I knew that I was going to love it. I knew that I was going to love it. And for some reason, I just put it off for so long and that's Forget Me Not. I know this is Jess's favorite QB Tyler book of all time. Like she literally talks about it all the time. And that's why I was like, I need to read it because I will read anything that Jess says. And I already knew that I loved QB Tyler's books and her writing. But I just put it off for a while, but I finally read it this month. Oh my God, it was so, so good. So this one follows Olivia and Bennett and it is a marriage in trouble, cheating, amnesia romance. Oh my God. So we start out at the beginning of the book here where Olivia gets a phone call that Bennett has been in a car accident. So she goes to the hospital and as he wakes up and they start talking, they realize that Bennett has no memory of the past two years whatsoever. So in his mind, him and Olivia are still married, still happy, still like thriving in, the, in their honeymoon state. And where Olivia is at in the present is they are getting a divorce. They're like a month or something away from finalizing it. She is like casually seeing someone on the side and Bennett is living with his girlfriend that he cheated on Olivia with. But Bennett has no recollection of that. He thinks that they are still like in love and he can't fathom how they would be divorced. He just, he can't fathom the fact that he would have cheated, that he's with someone else and how they would have gotten to that point from where he still remembers them to be. Oh, it is incredible. Again, I don't mind the cheating in books. Again, in this, like the... The events leading up to it and then like the actual event of it, you see it and you know that it was not like a callous thing or like a vindictive thing that Bennett did to Olivia. Same with Charlie and Bittersweet Surrender. Like it's not a vindictive act of cheating on Matt. Okay, I'm getting off topic. And every bit as good as Jess said that it was, but again, still delivers on the spice. But mostly the angst. The angst in this book is off the freaking charts. The tension between the two of them as they're like figuring out this new normal for them is insane and then it's kind of like what would happen if Bennett returned his memories and what if he doesn't Olivia has to come clean and tell him like what happened when she like that's very painful for her to relive oh Oh, it's so good. The tension. Also forgot to mention trigger warnings for fertility and miscarriage in this book. Probably my favorite standalone. That's not always been you. Because always been you as a novella, but it will be a standalone. And that will reign supreme. But this one, so good. Okay, and last are two that I read in my Band Forbidden and Taboo reading vlogs. So Love Unexpected was actually in my first ever Band Forbidden and Taboo reading vlog. And that's the video that is like done the most, I think, for my channel. I have since revisited the book. <sighs> Fire. Straight up hotness for this one. And one of the most taboo ones. So this is a stepfather, stepdaughter age gap romance. So this one follows Stassi and Dominic. Dominic married Stassi's mother when she was young. I don't know, maybe like 10. I can't quite remember. But when she was younger. And he also worked at her school. And she never saw him as a father figure. Like never once did they have like a father-daughter type relationship whatsoever. If anything, like there was quite a bit of tension in their relationship. And then Stassi's mother passes away way and Stassi and Dominic are kind of left reeling with their guilt. This is the second time that Dominic has been widowed and now he kind of has Stassi that he's looking out for. 
and they kind of bond in their grief together. The hot level of this one, guys, ne next level. I'd say out of all of them, like I'd put this up there with like Bittersweet Surrender where this one is just like, it's straight up hot. It's a hot book. Like, yes, there's a high level of spice in it, but that doesn't always mean that I think that it's hot, but this one is straight up hot. I revisited this one after reading Always Been You because then I was like, I just need to go back and like reread some of Stassi and Dominic scenes. And actually, I think I would have bumped up my rating since then. Like, I think I would give this one a solid four out of five, where I think before I gave it a three and a half rounded up, where I think I was just being like overly critical of it. And that was still so early in like my really spicy reading books where I was like, well, if a book is like predominantly spice, I can't rate it the same as I would rate like a non-spice fantasy book. And like, that's just bullshit. Like my rating system has really like ebbed and flowed over time. And yeah, so I would definitely change my rating on this one. And I would say out of like the two that I did for the reading vlog, for the taboo reading vlogs, I definitely prefer this one over fan favorite unconditional. I think this is like overwhelmingly the most popular QB Tyler book. I feel like the most people I see talking about this one specifically and you know for good reason so this is a guardian ward age gap romance so super taboo super forbidden hi aria it's cal the police officer and he responds to a call and finds maddie when she's like four years old hiding in a closet and she immediately kind of bonds to him and her parents are now both uh, unable to take care of her. And she's now in a position that she needs a home and someone to take care of her. So Cal steps in and does that. And then when she's like 17, their relationship starts to kind of change. Maddie's taking notice of Cal in a different way. And Cal's taking notice of Maddie in a different way. So, you know, again, a super taboo book by her. But again, we love that. There's nothing wrong with taboo books over here with, in my book. So I think this is overwhelmingly, like I said, the fan favorite. I see so many people talk about it. Um, Cal and Maddie, I do really like. I just, this is just personally not my favorite. I do think that like, it just moved like a little too quickly for me. I do like a little more angst and tension, like how much we had with Olivia and Bennett and forget me not oh my god there was so much tension between the two of them that i don't know i do still like it um i still i think rated it four stars but it's just out of all the cubie tyler books it's not my personal favorite but i do know that it's like overwhelmingly i think everyone else's favorite so definitely make sure that you check it out just because it's not mine doesn't mean that it won't be yours oh dorian you look so handsome in the sunlight can you come here and say hi oh see look at how big you're getting do you guys remember when I used to hold them up and they were like these big? They were so little. Now you're so grown up. Oh, okay, anyways, <laughs> that's it for today's video. Like I said, make sure you check out Jess's channel for the live show that her and I will be doing with QB Tyler on Saturday, January 22nd at 6 p.m. Eastern time right because then 5 p.m my time i'm horrible with time zones so i'm going to get that right but anyways i'll link jess's channel down below so that way you can make sure that you see that i'm also going to link the link to twisted christmas down below so you make sure to go and buy that and download it and read always been you because it's fantastic i'll also leave like qb tyler's instagram link and like her website link and everything down below but all of her books are on Kindle Unlimited. So if you have Kindle, make sure you read them on there. If you don't have Kindle Unlimited, make sure that you do not pirate. We don't support pirating authors here. It's not cool. I really like doing these guide to author videos. So I do have a couple more planned in the future just when I finish up like Fiona Cole's backlist. I'm like two books away from finishing her entire backlist. So I wanna do one for her and just like certain authors that I've read the majority of their backlist. Like B Celeste too, I'm getting close on closing and on finishing all of hers too, so. I'll do more of them as I finish. So yeah, that's it for today and I will see you when I see you.